Today in the smuggler's room, we're... Come in, smuggler's room. Come in. You read me? Smuggler's room, are you there? Your transmission's garbled. Say again. Need reinforcements. Send, send everyone. Where are you? I'm escaping from Home Depot. Home Depot? I thought you were quarantining in the garage. Needed hardware for the mouse droid. <laughs> Who's chasing you? I had a disagreement with Mont Calamari in the hardware aisle. It's not my fault. <laughs> they just destroyed a Starbucks. And I was gonna get me a grande mocha too. <laughs> Send me your coordinates. Sector 21. Say again, junkyard, say again. Your transmission's garbled. Front. I'm going to build you a better communication device. <laughs> this thing's not even plugged in. Walmart, he's coming in hot. I guess that's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to The Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek is once again handing over the reins to the Junkyard Jedi, because he has a project you're absolutely going to love. Now, here at The Smuggler's Room, we are massive fans of Matthew Savage, who is a senior designer for film and TV. He has credits that include The Martian, Prometheus, Edge of Tomorrow, and more. And he also has credits for a pretty well-known film of series of films called Star Wars. That's right. He has amazing designs that you've seen in Rogue One, The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and so on. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. I frequent his website and his Instagram feed constantly as a source of inspiration. Now, some time ago, I ran across one of his designs for a Rebel mobile comm unit, and I immediately said, that's a project I want to build. Also immediately said, that's a project that's going to be really hard for me to do, but I happen to know someone that could do it. No surprise to me, the Junkyard Jedi, my dad, had already seen that material, had started collecting reference on it, and was also planning on figuring out how to do this crazy build. So over the last year, quarantined in his shop, this is what he's been working on. And I can't wait to take you through the whole project. Now before we dive in, I want to give a huge thanks to Matthew Savage for sharing all of his incredible work for all of us to enjoy. Follow links to his website in the description below. Go over to Instagram, give him a follow there. You're going to love the amount of artwork and inspiration he uploads constantly. And then finally, a massive thank you to my dad again for taking on this project and taking us through the journey. Let's get into the build. Well, as you know me, I like to start off with a little mock-up of our uh, project. This would be our metal piece all bent all the way around and then we'll have one splice at the bottom. So we gotta have to kind of start in the middle and work our way all the way around. I picked up a piece of aluminum but it's kind of dirtied up or scuffed up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is wet sand with some 600 grit sandpaper and water. Wet sand this. We can take out some of this blemish on here. We have to take our plans here and we're going to make all of our bends at these locations. You want to make sure your square is actually square. So put a piece of tape on here and we do a line all the way across. We'll check it on this side, and we check it this way, and we also check it this way. So we know that our square is actually square because it lines up on the line every direction we put it. So what we want to do is we find the middle. Now we need to make the center line down the middle here. So I was just double checking, make sure all my dimensions were correct. Measure twice, cut once. I don't want to scratch up our uh, metal. We've got to be able to see our line too. Jigsaw with a metal blade on it. OK, 
cut all the other four sides as well. So this is a um, metal brake that bends sheet metal. Put a piece on here. This clamps down and what you do is you line up your line right on the edge. And then all you do is just bend up on it. It makes a nice straight bend. And it also made a little guide. So this will uh, tell us how far to bend. So I'm putting that over here on this other side. All right, so this is our uh, hydraulic press. We need to make this bend on the back side. These little blocks. And yeah, we got a little guide here. So what we're trying to do is we need to pinch this line down to a 90. This edge here will push down in there and then make the bend this way. And that'll go right in there. How these work is you close off the hydraulic fluid so it pumps, pump it up and down. I'm supposed to get a bend here. Well, this takes the pressure off. I made a new uh, little fixture for our press. What we ended up with is this little little bend here. So we need to make this bend. This particular roller is exactly the right curve. This roller will, should roll right down inside here. getting pretty good. We got our uh, metal all bent. That'll be our screen. So now we know this and this is exactly what we want. There's also a base that goes underneath. We'll go ahead and screw this down to our baseboard. So now we can uh, cut our panels, cut all the radiuses on both sides, the notch here, and the same for the top. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, stiff paper and I'm gonna lay it in here against the metal, tape it down all the way around, and then now that will be a perfect pattern for what we have and then we'll transfer it to another piece of masonite.
In order to get support all the way around, I cut these uh, three quarter by five eighths little blocks. We'll glue them all the way around and give us a uh, place we can screw into. Plus, it's gonna give us a space to put our LED rope lighting all the way around. This isn't quite as glamorous as my jacks. Good weight anyway. We don't have sexy one, two, three blocks like Brian does. I just have to use my old floor jack. Now we have to uh, cut out our hole for the panel. We had to make this cavity here for our rope light to fit inside, but the panel is, is a lot smaller. So we're gonna have to build that up a little bit to hold the panel in place. I never cut so straight, but I cut on the inside of the line. Then we can go back with a file. We can file the edge right down to our pencil line, and that way we know it's straight. Cut some uh, quarter inch MDF board into little quarter inch strips and then we'll glue that around this perimeter. That will give us thickness on one side. Just for some safe measure, I think we'll pull a wax paper between the two here. We don't want them sticking glued to each other. We use these heavy guys here as clamps. A little patch job doesn't look too bad. Now this has got a roller bearing on it, so it'll rub on this quarter inch piece, and then it cuts bevel. Slopes it in kind of cool there. After we route this out, we want to square up the corner. It gives you a nice sharp corner that way. All right, nice and snug all the way around. Now we can uh, go ahead and start making our keyboard. So this fits in nice snug here, but we gotta fill in these gaps. What I've got is a piece of uh, cedar two by four. Cedar is real lightweight and it's easy to cut and carve and sand, but we need to trim it down so it'll fit inside here and in these little spots. Blocks formed all the way around here. There's a pattern that's routed out here. Before we glue these to the platform, we'll just cut these panels first. In order to keep from running over the edge here, we need a stop on this side. Here we have all the uh, bevels cut in. Now what we need to do is change our bits. We're gonna put in this half inch straight bit and then we'll plow out this whole area. So there's gonna be a whole lot of sawdust.
to pull a bondo in here and fill that back in because the router bit dropped in there. After our bondo dried here, you can use sandpaper to sand it down with. It clogs up your sandpaper. This is a drywall screen and the powder goes through it. It doesn't stick as that does. You can buy the replacement screens and then just use a block of wood. Uh, another thing is a paint scraper or cabinet scraper. You can scrape this down and make it more level and then go back with the sandpaper. We're just going to use some glazing putty. We're going to fill in all the way around the bottom and smooth that out. Anyway, we'll let it dry and uh, sand it down. It's a nice and flat. Cut a little piece of wood. It's got a 45 on it. Got some blocks here to help hold the uh, plant part up in the air. I'm going to cover this end up. decided to cut this off and we'll taper it uphill all the way up to here so it'll be easier to vacuum form the plastic over the top. You all remember the monster vacuum form machine the junkyard jet I made last week, right? Well, this piece he's working on particularly is what drove the need for that monster machine. This crazy piece with all its angles and bevels will ultimately become the buck. So there's an amazing amount of time and energy being spent to make sure it's absolutely perfect before vacuum forming, which we'll show you here in a bit. It was only a half inch radius and what I really wanted was about a inch radius. So we're going to file this down to this line here. A big old wood rasp and that'll take 90% of it off here. I'm going to cut this off. There's really no really easy way to do this other than a hand saw. To cut them off at this angle, what we're going to do now is take those pieces and we'll add them to the back end here. One other thing we have, may have trouble with, is these corners that mean air is going to just go over the top. It needs to be sucked down in these panels. So we need to make some relief holes in these corners and probably one in the middle here so that will suck this down. We have all this air in here that we don't need. What we should do is fill this area up. That saves more air for sucking down against the plastic. Well, let's see how this all works here. So all our little straws are hot glued to the table top. What I've done, I made a little slit with the scissors and now we can just go over each one of these. We're going to uh, pour a little plaster in here. We're gonna need about five or six of these batches. We get the plaster all filled up and leveled off and we can uh, cut our straws off. And now down to our friends at Lubbock Skylight Facility. And a big thank you to them for allowing us to use their huge oven to get a great couple of pulls on our project. This is our first pull we did, so we can use it as a pattern. This is upside down and backwards, so bear with me here. I made some preliminary marks on this. I 
as you can see, you definitely don't want to try to cut your line with this, but we get rid of the bulk of it. Now we can go back and uh, trim our lines. So here's our uh, for real piece. off and we'll just cut right on the blue line that way we can see it a whole lot easier all right so here we are figure out the hinge so it drops down as you can imagine after all of that we're only halfway through this my friends next week we'll pick up right where we left off and show you all the detail work electronics buttons greeblies paint and hopefully a better communications to our junkyard jedi now I wanna give a huge, massive, enormous thank you to my dad for taking on this project and sharing it with all of us. I've learned so many things from him throughout the years and it's an amazing feeling to know that now he's sharing that with you so that you can continue building something out of nothing. I'm escaping from Home Depot. Nice blinker, lady. Oh man, they just they just destroyed a Starbucks. And I was gonna get me a grande mocha too. Oh.